Dad, I rolled out of bed. Dad, can I come? Wear your worst jeans, he said. We'll probably have to do some painting. I yanked on some holy jeans and an old red t-shirt, grabbing my sketchbook and the pencil I always leave on top of it. I raced for the kitchen. Take an apple, Mark, Mom called from somewhere in that heel of bread. In the car, I asked Dad, do you have an early class? Luckily, not today. His voice was grave. Poor Molly. Yeah. He glanced at me. You're at the Hamlet a lot more than I am. Have you seen any gang members hanging around? Anybody from downtown? No, just old Willie, that panhandler I told you about. Lord, please. Dad prayed softly. Please keep the gangs away. The sheriff's car was parked in front of poor Polly's pantry, and I could see a woman deputy talking with Molly. A bunch of people were already scrubbing away at the store. Guy, Cammy, and her dad, Shirley Logan, Sheila and Pauline Stamford, and even Dina Wentworth. Dressed surprisingly in an old brown flannel shirt and men's overalls. As I closed her car door, I could see Tony strolling over from across the highway. Guy, I said in a low voice, we've got to get pictures of the graffiti. Get your camera. I already took some. He nodded towards his backpack. There's a big, clear one on the other side that hasn't been scrubbed on yet. Come here. My skin prickled as Guy took me around the corner and pointed to one of the black spray-painted designs. I sketched it hurriedly, trying for a realistic likeness. Looks like a treble clef, I said. You mean like in music? Yeah, but more squarish than a real treble clef. More like a dot-to-dot drawing. Mark! Dad's voice echoed off the nearby buildings in the early morning quiet. Coming! I gave a final glance at the symbol and at my sketch and hurried around the corner to join the work party. Tony had arrived and was talking with Bob Craiglander. Here, take this bucket and scouring pad, Mrs. Wentworth said when she saw me. We've got to scrub off as much of that black as we can before we repaint. I forgot whether or not spray paint is water-based. It's lucky that you saved those workmen's extra paint cans, Molly. Molly was close to tears. I've learned through hard experience. Cheer up, Dean Wentworth said briskly. It's probably nothing more than a teenage prank. I plopped my sketchbook down beside Guy's backpack, grabbed the bucket and scouring pad, and wandered around the building to where Sheila and her mom were scrubbing. Hi, Krug, Sheila said. Hi, how'd you hear about this? Mom called me from the cafe. This is her breakfast shift day. Mrs. Stanford nodded. The sheriff's car drove in, and I went to the window. I saw Molly down here, sort of crumpled up against her front door crying. So I just closed the cafe and came down. Want me to go open up? Sheila asked suddenly. No, said her mom. I'll go now that more people are here to help. She disappeared around the corner. I would love to get my hands on whoever did this, said Sheila, punctuating her speech with vicious scrubs. Who called the sheriff? Nobody knows. Mrs. Wang appeared around the corner, bearing a paint bucket and brush. Pursuing her was an alert young woman with a long nose. She was carrying a notebook and a camera. Tell me more, the young woman was saying. Have you ever seen this kind of graffiti before? Molly Wang thrust her brush into the bucket. I got the impression she would like to whopped the reporter across the face with it. I don't make a habit of studying gang symbols. The reporter tucked her notebook in her belt and focused her camera on the graffiti Sheila was working on. 
Sheila ducked out of the picture. This one's no good, the reporter complained. Is there a better one somewhere? Around the corner, Sheila snapped. But before the reporter could move, Dina Wentworth appeared. Even in her overalls and paint splash shirt, she was a commanding figure. I don't think we need the services of the press right now, she said. Could I ask you a few? I can't understand why you people need to blow every little teenage prank into a media event. Your name is? My name is Dina Wentworth, and I am the Hamlet manager. Who informed you about this? The young reporter's nose twitched. An anonymous caller. Has everything, has anything like this ever get off my property? Little red spots appeared on the reporter's cheeks. Mrs. Wentworth, I'm merely do, doing my duty. You may be interested to know that your editor and I went to high school together. Dina Wentworth said bluntly, If you wish to continue doing your duty at Ed's paper, I would suggest you put yourself more in touch with the struggles of local business pe persons. But no one champions freedom of the press more than I do, Mrs. Wentworth continued. But when it comes to sensationalism, that's where we've got to draw the line. And Ed would surely agree with me if I were to telephone him. But if you were to report this, a few local teenage toughs would get a large laugh out of it. And next week, we'd be visited by two or three copycats with more spray paint cans. And Hamlet customers would start getting nervous. Mrs. Wentworth, did Ed himself send you down here? Suddenly, the reporter's shoulders sagged. She turned and strode away. A moment later, we heard her car drive off. Mrs. Wong breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, Dina. I don't, I didn't know what to do. And my grand opening is Friday. This would simply ruin it. Molly, Mrs. Wentworth said seriously, do you think one of the downtown gangs might really have a vendetta against you? She shrugged helplessly. You mentioned that you might have offended a gang once. Do you think they took it seriously? Who knows? When all the work was done, Molly Wang thanked us tearfully. She told us kids that we were to enjoy a meal or two at Mother Brown's and she'd pay for it. That night, Guy, came, Cammy, and I went downtown with Sheila and her mom to help with the sandwiches to the street people operation. Jean Horton drove us in her van. Guess who, said Guy. The rest of us turned to look in the direction he was staring. Along the street, together with some others who'd seen us coming, shuffled old Willie, our gazebo musician. Hi, Willie, Sheila said when he reached us. He stared at us. Where have I seen you kids before? He blinked for a second or two. Wait, out there next to the clothing bank, right? We nodded. Sorry I can't sing for you tonight, he apologized. I already locked Marjorie up in the cupboard at Grace Mission. Only love of my life. What you been up to? Suddenly I had an idea. Willie, I said, opening my sketchbook to the page where I'd drawn the graffiti symbol. Does this mean anything to you? He squinted at it. Nope. Fill in the outlines a little, Mark, Guy suggested. He doesn't look enough like spray paint. I quickly shaded in the outline and soon had something that looked pretty much like what had been sprayed on the wall of poor Polly's pantry. I turned the sketchbook to face Willie. He squinted again, then jerked back in alarm. Where'd you see that? Are you a member? Is that a gang symbol? Asked Guy. Is that a gang symbol? 
Willie repeated. He glanced around him and lowered his voice. Listen, where did you see this? I looked at Guy. He shrugged. Out there on the walls of one of our stores. He stared at me. When you folks, the new folks are in real trouble. That's the Turton Street gang sign. And right around here is their territory. They've sprayed one of their signs around the corner over there. You better watch out. If Turton Street's muscling in on your turf, you better just pack up and move away.